Well, welcome, everybody. So this kind of grew out of the Podcast Editors Club. It was just a way to kind of... So I think the topic of Mastermind kind of came up, so I threw it out there if other people want to join. And these three lovely people were interested, so you started Mastermind, and here we are. So this is actually the second episode. Uh, the first one should be coming out pretty soon. But it's going to be like a full-fledged podcast with other people coming on. So if you are interested in um, being a guest on it, so if you have issues, you know, if you're a podcast editor, you know, we'd love to have you on to kind of go over what issues you're facing. But you do have to edit an episode if you're interested. So Yeah, but we promise to passage. trim the pre-talk <laughs> and the post-talk. Oh, do we? Well, yeah. <laughs> do. Well, I f- yeah, I feel like that's safer. So do we want to start with... Um, Meet Fox or I, I think we should start with disaster or continuity planning because that was okay. that's been a big topic and I've I think Jennifer brought it up. It was either Jennifer or Carrie brought it up today. We've seen we've it's seen Carrie. a lot of stuff related to f- fake news and that kind of that kind of thing. But there's also the question, Carrie, that you had that affects us as podcast editors. So you do you want to oh, share I don't that? Remember what the question was? <laughs> uh, we'll scroll we back talk in the chat. Lot. So Find out. It, it was, <laughs> yeah, I think it was a lot around, you know, finding clients and continuing to right. work and planning for personal stuff as right. well. So what do you do? What do you tell your clients during this time when they are starting to freak out? Because I've had clients ask me, what happens if there's no money coming in and I can't? pay you (laughs) like editing is going to be the first thing that they think is they're going to it's like a luxury to them and then how do Mm. you keep your business going like how do you and how do you market that without being a creep (laughs) yeah and and tone deaf and then what should you be advising your clients to do during what essentially is a disaster so that those are the the main things that have been coming up. So, do you guys have thoughts? Like, um, I think Jennifer, this probably hits you pretty hard as well, having a physical space. So, do you have thoughts? Uh, as far as the physical space goes, we're still open. The governor here in Kentucky has shut down all public facing businesses. So, public facing businesses. We're forced to close. Well, I'm not a public facing business. It's mostly just me in the office all the time. And I have a few people come in and I have a shared office space as well. So now they're not shared offices anymore. They are independent, (laughs) socially distanced offices with one person each. And then with the studio, I'm wiping down and cleaning off and mopping and wiping down again and all that sorts of good stuff. And it's still open because my volume is so small and it hasn't affected me yet. Uh, I actually have someone who's dying to get back in. So keep it one or two people spread out. Keep cleaning it up. That's my approach right now. As far as the remote clients, I haven't had anybody bail on me, but I got behind today due to some family stuff because my kids are home and wrote the client and said, you know, I've got this going on and And she's like, no, that's fine. No hurry. And in her case, she's in another state, but she records at a local co-working space where she is, but she had batch recorded enough that she won't get behind. Okay. So, (laughs) Carrie, you had the question about what do we tell our clients? Has anybody done this yet? And I guess that goes for those of you in the chat as well. If you edit for people, have you already had the opportunity to share something with them, and then what was that? It hasn't impacted me, so I can talk from ideas, but I can't talk from practice. So I guess my first question is really for the the editors group here, and then those of you in the chat. Have you shared anything with your clients that related to this? I have. I okay. have created a blog post on what podcasters should be doing during this time, with broken down into different categories, like the hygiene part, like clean your microphones, (laughs) and but clean them correctly. And of course, wash your hands. I mean, I don't think we can say that enough, just like even not in a pandemic, 
but it's nice to be able to say wash your hands. And then what you can do to deal with podcasting. So don't be tone deaf to your audience. Pay attention to their feedback. Ask them specifically, go out and engage your audience. And a lot of people say, well, how do I talk to my audience? Well, you talk to them. You, any, you know, the people that uh, interact with you on social media that comment, you know, mention things about your show, find those people and actually have conversations with them about what they want. You know, hopefully you have some sort of community. You've had a Facebook group or like a hashtag or something that you can look up, you know, hint, hint to podcasters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and talk to them, engage with them, and find out what they want for you specifically as a person with a public platform. And that's going to be different for every audience. Like every audience is going to need different things. So don't just follow what everybody else is doing. Really get that feedback and think think critically about what your audience wants. And then the last thing, the last part of my list is really about supporting your fellow podcasters. Now's the time to start making, mm -hmm. you know, those top 10 lists for what people, different sorts of people should be listening to. So, you know, you oh. have teachers in your life Ooh, I like share that. 10 podcasts that would suit their demographic, essentially, which are, you know, students in their age group. You know, for entrepreneurs, share those lists. For people who are looking to be entertained, share those lists. You know, the, the people with anxiety, share the podcast about anxiety, those kinds of things that we can be doing to make sure that podcasting isn't overlooked during this time because we really have a unique platform to help people through a very difficult time in a very interesting way. And then lastly, support your favorite podcast with money. <laughs> Literally donate to Don those you know, three or four favorite podcasts you have with actual dollars. And that will help everybody. So, and it doesn't have to be wow. forever, but through this time, you know, get, do that dollar Patreon level. That's not, you know, that's not hard. You're not spending yeah. it on coffee. So, <laughs> 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 right. You're not right. spending it on dining right. out. So that's support for sure. those creators not, not that you anyway. love. And that's that. That's specifically what I have been sharing with my clients. And then on the you know the business side, the editing side. I'm sorry, I'm having a cat visitor. <laughs> yeah, which happens quite regularly yeah. for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, in just working with clients is really about calming their anxieties and being like, it's gonna be okay. Like, you need to do, of course, what's right for you. If you get sick, you know, let's let's plan for it a little bit. So, you know, now's the time to like plan out your content and plan what you're going to do if you happen to get sick or if you happen to find yourself in the role of a caregiver, mm -hmm. right? Because that's going to take away from podcasting and podcasting is not going to seem quite so important. So make your I'll be back after the pandemic message to upload to your podcast host right now. <laughs> And then also, yeah, don't stress about it, essentially. And, and don't be like, if you need to like change your publishing schedule, change your publishing schedule. And don't worry about how the audio sounds quite so much right now because everybody's kids are home. Everybody's being interrupted. Everybody's just making life work right now. So, so just relax. And then specifically for my clients, if you need kind of to reduce services right now, that's fine. Like I am just being completely flexible. If you need to do your payment monthly instead of biweekly or per episode, that's fine. If you need to have some extra time or pay in installments, I'm allowing them to do that because I understand there's going to be economic hardship for all of us in the future. And so let's deal with that now Let's have open, honest conversations about that now, rather than getting to a place where it 
seems like it's impossible. So those those are my things. Yeah. <laughs> do, we, do we have a second for uh, Tony Deck shared something in the stream, the watch party on mine. It's an article from transom.org. I'm not quite sure how to share that in the chat, but it hit a couple of the things that you talked about, cleaning your microphones. Also talked about making sure that there's enough personal space, which is one of the things that, that Jennifer hit on as well. Then the third one is something that the three of us are really, really familiar with, and that's the idea of if you've got a, a podcast that records in person, then consider doing remote recordings if you're not always in the same space. So this is something like we're right. Squadcast or Zencaster or Skype or whatever. Like that, those are the kinds of things that we typically do today. Streamyard, and I guess that would be the the thing I would wonder is would we encourage that kind of thing? Daniel, have you had to send any communication out? No. So my clients are I work with solopreneurs essentially. So it's people that have a service based business and they all work remotely anyway. So their day to day isn't being affected. So like currently like it's not affecting me other than a couple of clients have put out bonus episodes. The only one that I've that has affected me is um somebody who was already looking for a way to cut back on how much he was spending on editing, put money elsewhere. So he was already looking for reasons. And so this kind of gave him a perfect one to eliminate me completely. But other than that, like it hasn't really affected me at all, but long-term I'm kind of, so what I'm doing now is working on non-client specific things. So I'm working on like a reaper course, you know, writing blog posts, doing other things mm -hmm. um, that aren't tied directly to people paying me for editing. That's fair. Does that answer the I question? I think so. I mean, it was, it was kind of <laughs> Carrie's question. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I, I had something that... I had something that popped up because I was reading on Libsyn's page and they had posted a question about something about how is COVID-19 changing podcasting. And Emily Prokop shared a comment where she was talking about the amount of misinformation. And this is maybe going to be a controversial mm. question, but what, if any, responsibility do we as editors have if one of our clients is sharing information that's questionable on their show? By law, I believe. Now, I, I'm not a lawyer, so here's my disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer. But from what I understand, the FTC requires you to state that if you are giving medical advice and you are not a doctor or other medical expert, then you need to share that with your audience. You need to let your audience know and tell them for actual medical advice, consult a medical professional. And that's, you know, the same in like financial services and law and all those mm -hmm. things. So you need to be very, very careful as an editor. Hopefully you have an indemnity clause of some kind in your contract. But if you don't, you it's your responsibility as an editor to go to that client and say, hey, this is medical advice. And you need to add this disclaimer, this quick little disclaimer that you are not a doctor. You are not a health expert. You have not been to medical school and are not qualified. You are just sharing your opinion and not qualified medical advice because you can hurt people. Like that's so, so that's how, what I would do. <laughs> just, <laughs> Sounds good. I feel like we're moving yeah. on. <laughs> Agreed. She, I don't know. I mean, you I don't know better know than to, to drop the mic, but I think that. that's what that oh, was. Thank you. Well, I don't yeah. want to actually drop the mic. I think we like almost had that happen. So, oh yeah. But do you want to talk about marketing during this time, like marketing your business? All right. I'll please, talk about marketing do. during this time <laughs> because I am on it. <laughs> <laughs> what Carrie said, you're marketing like a boss right now. It's like, yeah, because I have a product and service that people can actually use right now. 
you know, we we kind of joke about everyone's going to be starting a podcast now because of the virus and everyone's holed up in their homes. Well, guess who we are? We are the podcast editors and we can make your crappy home audio sound a little bit better. But as a hairstylist told me once, I may not be able to fix it, but I can help it. So give us what you have and we will help you. So what I'm doing is creating graphics in Canva as often as I remember to do so or as time allows. Like today, the day was a wash, but sometimes taking time and just, you know, you know, <laughs> I can help you out <laughs> with this. And and I started yesterday, started doing daily Facebook lives with so if you want to start a podcast right now, here are some of the things you could be doing. So yesterday we talked about brainstorming your topic. And then today I did a little microphone, what I recommend thing. And going to try to continue that daily and just giving people tips. If they are bored and want to start a podcast, which I want them to, then here's how to get started. So those are some of the things I'm doing. What about you guys? I'm doing the same that I always do, which is very little. <laughs> so I'm I, I back away from the mic now and I wait for the the professionals. <laughs> oh, oh well, maybe you don't need to. Maybe your clients just come to you because your branding and marketing has just been on point, right? Because of the 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 seminar that I went to right? a couple of weeks you ago, you learned it was so taught much. by a couple of incredible yes. people. Yes, yes. For those that don't know, we were at a conference a couple of weeks ago, and Carrie had half of a section, half of a session on marketing and branding. And what I learned is that I know basically nothing, but I'm trying to take what she shared and put that into use. Yeah, and shout out to uh, Emily Prokop for doing that session with me, and for Steve Stewart and Mark Deal for putting that together. And if you are an attendee, you will get all that information shortly from them. So uh, I just throwing that out there. But um, Daniel, what are you doing in terms of marketing? I know, so I know you're building stuff out to diversify what you're doing. But how do you? What are you doing to market? So a whole lot of planning right now. So one of the sessions that I attended while at Podfest was an, uh, a session on SEO. And it was by Jurgen. I can't remember his last name, but it was like really information heavy and fascinating. And I realized that my website is awful when it comes to <laughs> SEO and ranking. So one thing is learning more about SEO and how to get my website to rank better. And then kind of side note is I'm hoping to kind of turn that into like more services for my clients so they can work on like their episodes. Wait, to wait, rank I better. just want to stop because mm. every professional editor needs to hear this. You're learning something new yeah. and you paid to go to this conference to learn something new. And now you can take yes. that information that you're, you've learned and put into practice for yourself and then use it in a value add for your clients. <gasps> Ta da! <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. I'm done. That's it. <laughs> no, you're fine. Yeah. And then beyond that, I'm building out my social media and focusing. And that's something I've, I've struggled with for a while is like, do I want to promote like my personal accounts versus like my business accounts mm -hmm. and I'm still not landed exactly where because like a lot of what I do is for other editors like people in the profession but then I also have like a very specific demographic that I'm targeting so beyond that and then um writing blog posts to kind of capture I'm afraid of getting too much information away, but like how to start a podcast. Um, so I'm working on blog posts to do that, to kind of capture like some of um, the potential traffic well, that's happening right now. And then also looking into ooh, Facebook did ads. did you see the, um, the, I'm sorry, I don't mean to see, look, I'm sorry, this is not hmm? the Carrie show. I apologize in advance, but I just want to, <laughs> so Facebook no, for the COVID-19 is going to be launching disaster grants where they're giving away 
three hundred to three hundred thousand businesses advertising credits, and they're giving another, I think, three million dollars in grants. So that's. I just wanted to throw that out there, and I will wow. find a link for that somewhere. But you can, I think, sign up to get information about that. So just throw that out there. All right, continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am making a note of that right now because that is interesting. And honestly, just like looking to for actually marketing, because like up to this point, I've been fortunate to rely on kind of word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, so I want to be and it's been kind of like my goal for the year to be like more proactive in my marketing and like finding new clients and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, that's really that's really cool. And I know like so there there's just a lot of things you said about marketing that was really good there. So um but I so I wanted to say also in addition to the Facebook thing is that you said you feel like you were giving too much away for free almost. However, People will pay for you to aggregate that information. So if you just take, you can actually take that free content, put it all together into like a course and people will pay for it, pay for it, even though it's already available on your blog. So that's also something to keep in mind as we look for ways to diversify our businesses, because I think we should be diverse and use our skills so and you can also use it for your launch clients too like put that all together and when they sign up for a launch launch packet they get Hmm. the course yeah i like that i was actually (laughs) worried about giving too much information oh they already they can already google it i would like it doesn't matter because i have that happen too where people will you know i'll do something and then just an hour or two later i'll see somebody else doing (laughs) that exact same thing and i'm like i'm not worried (laughs) about it for one my audience is different than my competitor's audience like i mean we're not necessarily in direct competition because I work with a certain kind of people, which I have defined with my client avatar. So when I write a post, it is speaking to a certain person. It's not going to necessarily speak to the person who is like borrowing what I'm doing. They'll message to their clients, essentially their, their audience. So that's why I'm not, I mean, yeah, it gets frustrating, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm flattered by it, but I'm not like worried about it because I am speaking to the people who want to work with me specifically. So. I think though that, you know, Daniel's hesitance to share something on this really can kind of speaks to the value of what we've been able to do as a group of four, right? Because between us, we have sort of, I don't want to call it a gentleman's agreement because that's kind of it's bigger than that, but we kind of have an understanding between ourselves that we're here to help each other and not try try to steal ideas other than stealing in a good way. We're, we're, and so it's a little bit different when you take an idea and you start sharing it publicly to p- perhaps fives of people. I don't know how many people are watching right now, but you know this this could Five. be <laughs> right. But but it. I had to for because a while. Because the, the reality is, <laughs> as much as we want to be as generous as we possibly can, at the same time, there are people that will take an idea that has taken perhaps days, weeks, or months to flesh out. And if we share all of it, somebody could take all of that intellectual property, if you will. I know it's not copyrighted, but could take all of that and skip skip to the end, right? And so it's a little bit challenging to figure out how much you can share here versus other places. And so this is this is part of us, I think, learning how to also do this publicly, right? Because um, we, we share within the group of four, we share pretty openly mm-hmm. about the stuff that's going on and the stuff that we're doing. And I mean, I've asked a few times to make sure, but we, we do kind of steal from each other, but we serve different markets and we've done that on purpose. Right. Because um, if any of y'all so, try to take my Kentucky people, I'm coming after you. 
<laughs> just, yeah, it's kind of thing. Like, anybody from t- Kentucky that comes right. my way, I'm like, I'm going to make sure to send them to Jennifer right. because like that's her focus. Right. And the yeah. other bonus is that we like if, when we uh, have a consultation with a client that's not right for us, we immediately have three other people that will probably fit. It, that client will probably fit one of those three people. So if I, you know, we're constantly like sharing those referrals with each other. I mean, you guys are the first people I think of. So, Thanks. Can I ask a question yeah. from the comments? Yeah. It's related to marketing. Yeah, absolutely. So Tony Deck has been very active in the watch party that I shared. We'll have to figure out how to do this better so that yeah, his comments Tony. show up for everybody. But he had <laughs> I like the, Tony. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry. He had the question. Yeah. He had the question about whether any of us are porting or repurposing content to YouTube in order to cross promote. Uh, I can say the answer for me is pretty close to no. I do the the Libsyn thing where I shove an episode over with the graphics and that's pretty much it. But what about the rest of us? I have done uh, what you're doing, Brian, and I have thought about do, taking – because now I'm making the, in, the IGT – I have some IGTV videos and we're doing stuff like this, live streaming, all that can be repurposed. So, yeah, I would just love to be able to make it automated so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> but but then, then again, are my people on YouTube? I know it's like a search base, but I don't know that my demographic specifically uses a lot of YouTube. And if they do, it's not necessarily for podcasting stuff, although it is for learning and also, I feel like Tom Kelly's crushing it, and I <laughs> I can't compete oh, with that, dude. I can't Props compete to Tom with Kelly. that. I like no, I, and I, and I'm not a video editor either. So I do videos for my clients about Audacity, mm-hmm. how to use it and stuff. So I, there's some tutorials I've done about Audacity out there on YouTube, but I don't utilize it for marketing i just somebody needed to know how to add music to their file so i just uploaded it to youtube and gave them the link and then people watch it when they search for help on the the youtubes as a search engine and look for audacity help and right. maybe my video will show up but that was before i'd branded myself as bourbon barrel podcasting so maybe i need to do new videos and use it as a marketing mm-hmm. if i'm making the videos for my people anyway Right, and that would be a, a, the perfect reason to repurpose. Like, I think I should probably yeah. take those audition, little mini audition tutorials and put them on YouTube. Perfect or not, because I think it's good information. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Now I'm inspired to do more. Yeah. Smarter people use more YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so not that we're not smart, but like. We're just not we're just not smart enough for YouTube yet. We'll get there. Like I find just not, you, sa- not, not smart. It's savvy. Savvy. savvy that's enough. the word. How about that? Savvy. That I am not. Better. I am not YouTube. I think I uploaded uh, an episode of my podcast manually on YouTube the other week, and it took me about two hours to figure out how to do it. It took me it took me like thirty minutes to figure out how to get it on the right account. <laughs> so. Not my strong suit. Yeah, I haven't done anything with YouTube yet. And as far as like my editing side of things, as far as like, you know, client client acquisition and for my clients, I don't see YouTube as like, that's not where my, my ideal client is, but I do plan on using YouTube for, and so this is something, okay. Now this is some kind of going back to the SEO and like, um, that I learned because Google owns YouTube, they put a lot of weight, like SEO value, on mm. um, videos from YouTube. So what I'm going to do is, so I'm working on a Reaper course, and there's going to be a series of free courses that you can sign up for. I'm also going to put that on YouTube and then embed those into um, like blog posts on my website. And then we can also do, uh, for your clients or for your own show, do like a teaser for each episode. And like, you know, record like an actual video, put that on YouTube, and then you can put that video into your episodes blog post when you release it and to kind of give you a little boost on uh, Google rankings. So for my marketing, like I, 
everybody should know the 80 20 rule, right? Mm-hmm. That's where I do now. And thanks to your, uh, that, well, recession. thanks to Emily, right? She, she brought it up. So 80% of, oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, we give credit what credit's due, right? Emily is so yeah. smart. So 80% of what you're putting out into the world as marketing, because everything you're doing essentially is marketing and branding as somebody in business. So 80% of what you put out into the world should not be a pitch. It should be inspirational, educational, valuable, you know, what have you. And then the 20% of what you put out should be those things, but also like, oh, yeah, I have a course if you want more. Or you can sign up, you know, talk to me about my editing services. So uh, I have this bad habit of doing like (laughs) (laughs) 90-10 where I forget I'm like actually selling something. And so my, my, my marketing strategy seems to be giving everything away for free. And that has worked. (laughs) That has worked. I, I I can't, I cannot complain. I'm doing more stuff like this, uh, live streaming. I've been doing in our just busters community. We're doing a speaker series with amazing people so not only do we get to live stream but we also get to learn stuff about podcast editing so uh it's just being in front of people and joining other people's live streams and bonnie frank shout out to bonnie because she's super smart and she's like my coach so i'm gonna chat her out she's brilliant and all this stuff she always recommends use Live streams, be present, engage with other people on their stuff. And when they're like, oh, yeah, Bonnie, like Tony, Tony, you're brilliant because now we all know who you are. And I'm assuming (laughs) you're a podcast editor. So now on our podcast, we are essentially advertising your greatness because you have made really insightful, engaging comments with us. So congratulations, Tony. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Tony, Tony's a bit of a rock star. I know him from one of the other groups. Okay, yeah, he, I don't know Tony, but... He teaches, I want to say college level, I can't remember for sure, but he teaches this kind of stuff, oh, so it's really cool, cool to see him out there. Yeah. yeah, and see, now Tony has entered my world, which before we weren't connected at all. And that, my friends, is marketing in a very natural, organic way. So, yeah. That's it. That that so that's the kind of stuff I've been doing. I like to do it so it's it's not work for me. I enjoy it. Like cuz everybody's like marketing ug. But if you just do it in a fun way, then it's like marketing yay and you don't even think about it. So Tony. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, man. It's great to have you. <laughs> you're awesome. Hey, you're watching. We love you, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nice. And the shout out podcastfellows.com. Awesome. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So everybody go. I know that, that exists. Yeah. Now I've got to add that to the, li- the list of links yeah. for the episode yeah. notes. <laughs> so I had a, a couple things I wanted to, I guess, just one resource I wanted to share and then a question. One of the members of the Podcast Editors Club asked or posed the question about coronavirus, COVID-19, and shared a little bit of the reality of how it's impacting his business. He has a recording studio that people come into to record the big businesses, and it's a it's a big chunk of change. And so some of those businesses have changed what they're doing as they're trying to figure out how to navigate this as well. And he shared some ideas for how to approach this, what he's doing with his business. That's in the Podcast Editors Club on Facebook. And I sent a link, Daniel, if you can share that, then yeah. If you're not a member of the Podcast Editors Club and you do edit podcasts, we'd suggest that you join that group. Mm -hmm. It's 5,000 plus people. And this particular article might make it worth your while all by, by itself. The question I have, though, is something that the Yetis, the four of us, have talked about before <laughs> a little bit. And that's, okay, there's this thing going around, and truth be told, it could it could hit you. So as an editor, not only how do you communicate, but how do you plan for the possibility that you might get sick? I have a team, so <laughs> I've got some backup. <laughs> uh, but it's a total possibility because we went to PodFest, and who knows? 
right? And not saying, you know, podcast was totally worth it. And I would die for that conference. Like, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> shout out to PodFest. Like, I do not regret going at all. I'm, you know, it learned so much and enjoyed myself. But we were not social distancing, even though we didn't like all, we weren't like touchy, shaky hands people. But I was. Well, yeah, I, I was, yeah, I wasn't <laughs> so much. I was, you know, but you can take advantage of white label services. Now, if you have a studio, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little different. Sorry, Jennifer. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, really, I have, I have alerted. So my, I have one Crystal. team member, shout out to Alejandro. He is crushing it for me. And I, we've already talked. Like I told him, if, if something does happen to me, if I do get sick, I may need to lean on him. So, like, prepare yourself. Of course, if he gets sick, then <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> don't get sick. Stay in your house, Alejandro. Do not leave your house. <laughs> Seriously, wow. I will mail you some groceries. <laughs> don't leave. Uh but yeah, other than that, it's communicating with clients and understanding that if they need to get the work done, they need to get the work done. And then I need to like figure something out. I mean, I have luckily before this and I'm not thrilled about it, but I did start looking into securing lines of credit for the for the business and not for me, like under the business name. So in case something did happen, it would be okay. That was really lucky because I didn't know that this was going to happen. So I will have that in case I need to keep the business afloat if the worst happens. But other than that, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't have a team. It's just me. But this topic came up in the Just Busters group. So any female podcast editors out there, join Just Busters. Just Busters. And... We talked in a group about leaning on one another if it comes to worse and we totally get stuck and we don't have a team behind us. How are we going to do this? Are we going to start a spreadsheet or something? But if you get stuck, be able to go to that group of editors that you trust and say, hey, I need help. And hopefully since we had this conversation, people are going to step up and, you know, can help you out. I've helped other editors. I've helped you out before. Carrie, you know, you're like, I'm overwhelmed. I just need this one oh, show done. Uh, yeah. Like, okay. And you know what? I was sick at that time too. Right. <laughs> so it was yeah. really helpful. <laughs> yeah. So we we have already done it. Just pitch to somebody you have. Unfortunately, um, yeah, I, I plan to get a team eventually, but I'm not quite there yet because I bought a building with a studio instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hmm. <laughs> you know, so I went with studio instead of team for this point in time. But yeah, I, I'm just planning not to get sick. I don't see people most of the time anyway, except I feel compelled to go to the store every day just to see how it's going in the store. <laughs> um, I'm like, I got to see if they got restocked on peanut butter because everybody's talking about the toilet paper shortage. But y'all peanut butter, Jif, not there. We had three jars before this happened, so. <laughs> well, that's good because there's no peanut butter on the shelves. <laughs> it's terrible. Yeah, and I know for me, like I don't have a team yet. That's something that was a 2020 goal, but now that could change. Kind of stay fluid. But you but... have a VA helping you too. And you have your your COO Lovely or wife. CEO the woman in yeah. charge. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So you do. I do have a team, just not editors. Right. So if I do get sick, I do have people that can pick up some of the slack and I can just focus on editing. And then something that I brought up a while ago, I had a client ask me, like, what happens like if you get hit by a truck? Like, what happens with my show? Hmm. And I didn't have a good answer. And I brought it to this mastermind and just kind of like put it out there. Like, if one person is in that situation where they don't really have any options like to come together and pick up that workload just so like they're not completely screwed over. 
And then also like Jennifer, like my 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 strategy is just to not get sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not happening. That's not a good strategy. So it's not, but <laughs> so in like Jennifer mentioned in Just Busters. Take your vitamins. Right. Keep healthy. Your vitamin C. <laughs> Although we are not doctors. Wash your hands. We're not doctors. Okay. <laughs> we are not doctors. We are podcast editors. Yeah. So so in Just Busters, one of the things I'm working on is like a sick day sheet because as business owners and as free, freelancers, pandemic or not, there are times when you're going to get sick and you're, you need help. Like not everybody has a team. And even me having a team, if I get sick, there's still – I still have a workload. So it would be nice, I think – for all of us to come together as podcast editors and if, you know, that somebody wants to go to Steve Stewart about doing this in the podcast editors club, like have a list of people that you can draw from. Yeah. So I, I, I guess my strategy has really three steps then. Step one is just don't ever get sick. And step two is suck it up and do it anyway. Yeah. And then step three is if that doesn't work, reach out to the three of you and see if anybody can take on some additional work because even though I expect that my clients would be understanding, I don't want to put them in the position to have to be understanding. I want to deliver one way or Mm -hmm. another. Yeah. Amen. I, I, that, that conversation is like a dreaded conversation. (laughs) <laughs> I don't ever yeah. want to. Oh look, I just touched my face. I hope I don't yeah. get sick. I yeah, touched was... my face this whole thing. So yeah. Okay. Well, as long as Jennifer clean hands. Right. Yeah, hand sanitizer. I've got a big old bottle of hand sanitizer on my desk. I've got essential oils. Make fun of me if you. <laughs> oh, that's what we so... have that too. Uh, but it smells like old people. <laughs> that's not very nice. It smells like an attic. It's musty and old, so. Well, you need different kinds of oils then. Right. Good thing we're social distancing. <laughs> let me put it that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so do we have a time for an unrelated question? Yes. Sure. Always. So. Okay. I just wanted to ask to be respectful of <laughs> <laughs> the delivery. Man. Yeah, I just back up my truck. Chris, you, <laughs> you're amazing. Okay. So for so, the, the audio recording, oh, put it back up because I... It's, okay, so Chris Kern's watching us live. Shout out to Chris. Hey. And it says that Brian's WWF name would be The Delivery Man. What's your yeah, walk-on music? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Probably whistling. Yeah, the beeping of a like, truck backing up. You know what? I should have broken out the roadcaster <laughs> and and done sound effects for this because. Yeah, I'm just thinking like there's so many other things that we could be doing. Right. But yeah. hey, it's the first time. Right. Um, yeah. It's going to get better. Yeah. So I, I so had the question. what's your unrelated question? Yeah. And, and I kind of pinged you guys about this earlier today. I've been using a combination of Book Like a Boss, which I paid for using AppSumo, I don't know, probably two years ago, and I absolutely love it. And I've paired that with Zoom.us so that when I need to set up a call with somebody, it's really seamless. They select a time on my calendar. It automatically creates a connection link. That part's great. But Zoom is costing me 16 and a half bucks a month. And I saw that AppSumo has a new app uh, called Meet Fox. And I think Daniel bought that. And so I wanted to see if we could get a quick walkthrough to see what the feature set is like so that I can make a decision about whether I want to spend 50 bucks one time to get that or continue with the current process that I'm using. And so if Daniel's kind enough to run us through that, then I'm going to be sit here and watching. And for those of you that have something similar, maybe this would be valuable for you too. Yeah, absolutely. And then before we do that, before I forget, um, shout out to Chris Curran. Uh, he has a group called Podcasters Lounge, and oh, they live, yeah. they're streaming all the time now. And it's just like a great place for podcast- podcasters just to kind of like hang out and have a chill time. So be sure to join that group and join his live streams. I think he's going live tomorrow night. So be sure to do that. Yeah. And answer the two questions and then don't promote yourself. Because you'll yeah. get booted. Yes. And if I <laughs> yeah. see you promote yourself, you're done. Yeah. <laughs> Just a rule of thumb. Like Chris, Chris unless it's a cool. podcast group dedicated to podcast promotion, don't promote your stuff. Like nobody's there for that. Yes. And podcasters, don't promote your services. Okay. Podcast editors, I mean, yeah. don't promote your services. I never don't. read those threads anyway. Just saying. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So Meat Fox is something I bought off of AppSumo. Currently going for $50. And I love it because it. I was using Calendly and then also Zoom. So And I didn't want to pay for it. So I would like schedule. I could have Calendly on my website, schedule that. And then I would then manually add a meeting in Zoom, which would then add it to... And then like from there, manually add it to my Google Calendar. Then I saw this thing with me, Fox, and I have not looked back. So let me share my screen. All right. So this is my website. And this is like a place to schedule a free consultation that I have on my website. So there's this cool little calendar. They can click pick your time, sign up, confirm, and then done. So that's from the client side. And then here so there is it is a startup and they're not they don't have everything kind of um worked out but you have a list of your upcoming what's the word meetings, meetings. <laughs> yeah you have the option to record it they have a live chat so that you can actually talk my like, chat with whoever you have meetings with and you can set up different services so I have a bunch for all this. Couple cool features with the embed. So you can have a pop-up button like this. So like what you saw on my like what I do on all my website is the inline. So it's just like a picture of the calendar. And you can choose to have the calendar or have Oh nice. Yeah. So it's either this calendar view. Or it'll say like the name of the service. Mm. And then you can do a pop up, which is really cool. So on my website, I have this little pop up here. So any page, oh. you can click that. And so this is a non calendar view. So you can schedule a call from that pop up. So is there a limitation on how many like appointments types you can have? Not that I'm aware of. And, and there might be with, um, cause they have like tiered pricing. So like there's a free one, you get three meetings a month with all that 20 meeting, you know, unlimited. And I think Did you say, I'm three? not sure what the app sumo deal so, is right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I would definitely need more than three meetings per month, but, but yeah. then again, so it, I guess it would depend what you're using zoom for too. Yeah. Uh, because I use it for other things besides uh, these things. Like I use it for our Facebook group and to do webinars and things. Yeah. So so it wouldn't replace Zoom for right. that. I know. I wish there was um, an all-in-one solution that did it all. What is wrong with people? <laughs> so why have they made this for me? Like Zoom could really be something if they just fix their audio. If they could do that, like yeah. that'd be the go-to, and like have a built-in scheduling function. Yeah, and then other things that I want, like I just yeah. need. Okay. Okay, so that so, was, but yeah, I can see how it's really useful. Mm -hmm. My biggest complaint right now is you can't manually schedule a meeting. Oh. So mm -hmm. if the client doesn't schedule it themselves, like you can't like put it on your calendar or anything. <laughs> Which is really you, annoying. You can't like you fake can... it and put in their email address and their time. Like, that's what I would do. Like, you'd have to do it yourself. Well, yeah, that's yeah. that's what I would yeah. totally do. And I had so you could. Do, do I that. think I do that with book like uh, a boss too. The problem with doing that though is so like I have mine, so I can look at my availability. So you can set up like when you're available, and then mm -hmm. you can set it up so that like you can't book with me within a two day window. So like if you go on my website now, you can't book it for the next 48 hours. So that way I don't have like same day or next day. Cause I, I need time to mentally prepare yeah. and I don't want like surprise meetings come up. So I put like a two day window yeah, there and, and you can't book more than three months. Can out. I just tell you why like editors should, should be aware of this. Like the, mm -hmm. the buffer time between scheduling and the meeting. I have had people, <laughs> I found this out the hard way. This is like one of the first hard lessons I learned was that 
they're sometimes they don't leave time to sleep depending on what, what part of the country they're in. And so you wake up and you've missed a meeting because, well, it was 6 a.m. and it they scheduled at like one o'clock in the morning and, and you don't know. Like <laughs> you were asleep oh, right. and they were waiting there at 6 a.m. for you and you weren't there and then you look like a jerk. Mm-hmm. So why that the crap is why. are you having one at 6 a.m. anyway? I, that's just an example. I mean, for, I'm trying to make myself early. look better because sometimes I don't get up till 11. And I just didn't want to. Thanks, Jennifer. You made me throw mm-hmm. that out there. <laughs> I mean, my, my first appointment availability is 5.30. In the uh, evening? A.m. Oh, a.m.? Nuh-uh. Yeah. It's, but, but you do yeah, it before work. I do it before work. And I've had a number of calls with people from Western Europe. So mm-hmm. that's perfect for them. That's like lunchtime, right? And and I yeah. would make that accommodation, but I would I would yeah. give myself the two days at least to make. Oh that yeah, I wouldn't let somebody choose that, right? I wouldn't. Yeah, that's bit me before. Yeah, yes. Yeah, see, <laughs> right? Exactly, because you need like oh, you scheduled it ten minutes ago. How nice. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had time to research your website just right. yet, but thanks for. <laughs> right. Watch and- out for time zones, by the way, because. Either me or my client, I'm not sure which one of us got the time zone wrong, but she called me an hour earlier than I was expecting today. And I was like, <gasps> I, and it was on the half hour. The call was going to be on the half hour. And when mm. the phone rang, I'm like, I know who it is, even though it's an hour before I thought it was. We just got the time <laughs> zones wrong. So <sighs> when you're scheduling, make sure, because she tried to do it through my calendar. I use Book Like a Boss. She tried to do it through that. And it was being wonky for her, so she just texted me, hey, can we hop on a call tomorrow? So it was still mm-hmm. a 24-hour notice, but then it was an hour off, so watch out for your time zone. That's all I got to say. Yeah. I had one podcast guest that couldn't get Book Like a Boss to work, and it was actually a booking agent for an author, getting the author scheduled. And so I went ahead and did it for them, and honestly, I wish that I hadn't. Because that turned out to be the hardest to navigate interview I'd had in a long time in terms of prov- making sure that all the materials were available, had to reschedule like three different times because stuff got messed up. It was just, mm. it was a real mess. For those of you, whether you're an editor or a podcaster, and I guess I'd say this with a proviso, know your audience, know your client. But if you're trying to allow people to schedule time with you and you don't have a scheduling system, you need to check into something like Meet Fox or Book Like a Boss or Calendly or Acuity Scheduling. Check into some kind of service that will help you with the time zones <laughs> and yeah. help you with the scheduling and make it easier for them. Because I don't know about you, but I work a day job. I work full time at another business. And sometimes we'll go back and forth three or four times trying to set up a meeting with somebody that could have easily been handled if they would have just taken the time to look at calendars and go, is yeah. is everybody available? And by doing this, you're allowing people to see your availability without giving them access to what's on your calendar. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and it makes... And that's just, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say it makes you look more professional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one thing, just kind of like in business, like a rule of thumb is don't ask when they're available because like that back and forth is annoying. Just give them a couple options that work for you and have them choose one. And if one of those doesn't work. So if, if you don't have a good booking calendar, like just give them limited options for like when they can choose to but do it. But Calendly has a free tier. Yes. So you should yes. be using that. It's so yeah. simple and people really appreciate it. So. Mm-hmm. Or just and follow Adam Sumo like a with fiend. your website. <laughs> Man, I've spent hundreds of dollars on oh. Sumo the last year and a half. Yeah. AppSumo's an issue. Yes. One thing I will say about <laughs> a mastermind. You all go away and get this from. <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? That's what I was going to say. You guys are expensive. Like, I seem to spend more money <laughs> on Fridays and Saturdays <laughs> because we've talked about the cool <laughs> things that, that we've purchased. So, no, but it's cool because um, we get we get neat tools. Like, I wouldn't have known about half the stuff I know about. Yeah. And just like different processes that you can learn from each other and then kind of refine. Yes. And having somebody spell check your website. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Are you talking about me again? No. I need you guys to look over (laughs) my website. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'll be the next. (laughs) That'll be another time. But So a couple other things that I like about Meet Fox, just like with any good booking service, you can actually put a price tag. 
and you can choose whether or not they pay at the time. So for me, like if you want me to audit your podcast or sign up for coaching, you have to pay before you're able to book it. And then the, and it's, I think it's Stripe and PayPal. And then the other thing is that it does integrate with your Google calendar. So if you are, and you can add multiple count, like I think, so I have my business calendar and my personal calendar. So like with PodFest, like I put myself as busy for that week. Mm -hmm. So that way I don't have to worry about like setting up in Meet Fox. All I got to do is just put in my Google calendar like I'm going to do anyway. And nobody can book during that, um, that period. And then also like you can't book. So if somebody books a time, like you can't book like 30 minutes before or after that kind of thing. Okay. So if you do have a lot of bookings, like I do quarterly reviews with my clients and we just kind of go over what we're working on, like what we can do to improve the show, different things. So like every three months I'll have like a bunch of bookings. So this way I don't have like one, I have, I have time in between. So I don't burn myself out. Yeah. You need that, that decompression time. <laughs> yeah. So mine's like cool. six hours. So <laughs> yeah. and I think I don't know if I if I've done it with me, Fox. I did with Calendly. Like I would limit limit it to either two or three calls a day. Because yeah. I know myself and I do not want to do more than that. I have mine limited. Plus I have my own work to do. I can't be on the call like phone all day. Right. And I, I've ch- I've stopped taking any calls or meetings on Thursdays or Fridays. Because those are the last two days to get episodes done, really, ideally, for the next week. So I don't have to work on the weekend. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So That's always nice. That's nice. I'm waiting for that to happen right now. And one other thing before I forget. So you can't physically, like manually put in a, like an appointment, but you can create a meeting room and you can share a link. So you can give a link to somebody and they can join in your room cool. okay sort and of like is, a, a zoom public meeting that kind of thing yeah and so this is what it looks like so if somebody else had a link they would show up in this space over here Wait, okay where has it helped you book more business what's that <laughs> has, it, has it helped you get more business no it's just made the process easier so okay. that way my va doesn't have to spend time copying things from zoom then to google calendar um and she can focus on other Which things. Which then, and they also have like a screen share option, so you can. Oh, that's nice. Hmm, that's cool. Yeah. Screen share. Yeah, I, th- I think I saw that it allows up to sixteen people or something like that. So oh, really, it, I think it's big enough for a, a small meeting. Like, huh. I think a, mm-hmm. n- maybe not a webinar of a thousand. And so it, maybe you could actually do you, use it webinars, for like your webinars yeah. and such. <laughs> I think you and could just as like, long as they're small. I don't think you can do an RTMP. Well, I don't think we're having mm. huge Well, webinars. you could use like OBS yeah. and just use that as an input. Oh, okay. See, <laughs> even though I do webinars, I have a weird system and I don't understand OBS whatsoever. Like, not a Well, maybe we can do that on another mastermind. I would like to. Mastermind. Because I Might don't. have to make that like a five-hour session for me. Right. <laughs> I, it's so confusing. Like... Uh, the last one I did, I didn't have it set correctly. So every time I like moved my Zoom screen, like in the Facebook Live, you could see like mm. the the window size change. Mm. I'll, I'll show you what I do because I I I I liked because I have OBS set up and I try to do that whenever I did my like live stream editing. So maybe like next time we do this, I'll use OBS and we can kind of play with some of the features. Yeah, especially as cool. as we're all in quarantine and live streaming becomes a little bit more <laughs> yeah. important for human contact. Uh, it might be helpful for okay. everybody because yeah. And if you're yeah, <laughs> and if you're interested in getting Meat Fox, if you'd be so kind, you can use my affiliate link. That'd be pretty dope. Oh, good. I was hoping you'd share that. I'm going to add that to the links. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even think about it until you brought it up. I'm like, eh, I probably should do that. Yeah, I'm I don't so know if there's a way I can actually link links. it. I am too. Like, Thanks, Brian. That's so good. We'll find yeah. out. He's so good. <laughs> They're pretty <Yeah>. ugly. <laughs> no, you're great. You're you're absolutely great. I'm touching my face. 
I'm touching my face. Okay. I've been Don't touching my that. face the whole time. I'm going to go I've back and watch this video. Use... Go look at my hand. I'm on my face the whole time. I'm trying to use my sweater, but like my and now, allergies. If you tell me not to touch my face, that's all I want to do. Yeah, right now my head's itching, so thanks mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, Brian, did you have any other questions about Meat Fox? N- not at this point. I appreciate you giving us a run through, though. It's hard for me to... So the the things that I liked about Zoom is even though I don't like the audio quality that much, Mm -hmm. I do like that it's very flexible and that I can use it to, if I wanted to, I could use it as the source for a live stream. So I could stream directly to Facebook using it or that kind of thing. And I didn't see that functionality with Meet Fox. Now, that streaming to Facebook thing, is that... Mm -hmm. So the last time I looked into that, it was part of that like top tier feature. Did they change that? Well, they've they've got two different things. One is the webinar capability, which is really 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 expensive. Okay. The other one is you can put in an what's called an RTMP destination. Okay, see, and it will. <laughs> that's where I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> so you you can put in a little link with some gobbledygook and stuff, and it will, <laughs> and it will then stream. Interestingly, if you put it in and don't disable it, it will just start streaming as soon as, <laughs> soon as you show up, even if you didn't intend to. I, oh, tested, wow. I tested it once. Like, I was like, wow, that's sweet. That works. The next time I popped on into Zoom, I'm like, oh, look, there I am. <laughs> How did that happen? Oh, dear. That's a feature, right? Now, where do you I, put I think that it is. link, though, that gobbledygook? Where do you put it? Okay. Like, Let, that's what I'm confused about. I don't know where it goes. They give sure, you this URL and... And I don't know what to do with it. It's not like they give you, they're like, here's a URL. And you're like, great. <laughs> what do you do? I, I'm looking to see if I can find it. Because I think it's under, I think it's on the web service, not in the. Not in the desktop client. Yeah. And I'm not, honestly, I'm not seeing it. It was not easy to find. They don't make um, anything easy to find. Yeah. I'm hesitant so- to open up Zoom. I'll go ahead and open up the app. <laughs> You so, guys can talk. Okay. Are you talking about where you put it in Zoom or where you like do it in Facebook? Well, but so where do you, where do you find it in Zoom? Where do you find that secret link? And then where do you put it in Facebook? So I don't know if you can live stream to a group. But I can show you real quick on like how to do it on a page. Okay. Yeah, because I my, my use I would need to stream it to a group essentially oh but you can still so, show me how to stream it to a page just in case like well, let I me look see. at that pretty page that looks so nice <laughs> oh i know gosh i hate my facebook page i need a better so banner create... after seeing that right <laughs> <laughs> um so you create like whenever you go to create a post there's this live button mm-hmm. just click on that wait for it to load <laughs> and then It's this right here. So the server URL and your stream key. See, I'm always afraid if I push that live button, I'm just going to go live. Like, that's it. No, you don't go live immediately if you hit that button. Okay, because I have never done that. I'm clicking it right now. It's not doing anything. Okay. Well, you kind of already are live. Because you are live. Well, not to my page. Oh. I'm on my page. I think you have to like. So could you get technically a a, a key from StreamYard and then put that into your... Yes, and I found it. Did you? Yes, let me, can I share my screen? Yeah. Doesn't look like it. Can you share your That's... screen? I mean, like, is that a thing? I don't know. Yeah, I have an oh, option wait. to share my screen. So I don't. Oh, my oh, God. There we are. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, that was wacky. Did you see us? So <gasps> on, uh, on Zoom.us, if you go to your personal meeting room, you can enter a stream key. Oh. Along with all of that information, and then that will send you directly there. And I had to disable that because uh. I was unintentionally starting meetings, <laughs> and it was not cool. <laughs> you mean people you wanted to meet one on one didn't appreciate? <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Um, so I found it in a group. So same thing. There's this live video button. There's Carrie. What? <laughs> Where? Oh. <laughs> and then it takes you to that same page. So then you can live stream to a group. Huh. 
Cool. Now that Easy that could that. save me twenty dollars a month with Restream. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're paying for Restream? Yes, because I couldn't figure out how to do anything. Like I literally could not figure it out. I I've reached okay. that age where it's too complicated, and either I get a t- I have to pay a teenager to do it, or <laughs> I'm just gonna pay a service to do it. So. I think we do need to mention that if somebody wants to edit this hot mess for the privilege of appearing on a future episode, we need a way for them to do that. We don't currently have a form for you to yeah. fill out. Uh, but if you just want to, like, I say just, like, reach out to one of us. Yeah. yeah. Although, through pay, DM or whatever. I may do a form. So, yeah. yeah there will be a form. Eventually, there'll be a form. But right now. Carrie already said not it. I already said not it. Right. Please. I'm creating the form. Please do not make no, us edit on this, editing this episode. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the bonus to editing this episode is that you then get a public space to show off your work. And then you can yeah. come on the show and talk about the like really cool things you did and how you dealt with, I don't know, every time I banged into the microphone, the boom arm. And you can yell at me. I'm okay with that. You can. <laughs> do you, with my crappy audio because i'm recording this right. through my webcam oops right yeah uh, yeah and i'm so used to like not caring about my audio when we're doing a mastermind so like i'm not close enough to the mic right. and i'm moving all over the place right that kind of thing and, and we will gladly be uh, well i certainly will i can't speak for everything but gladly be a reference for you to use to help you get clients mm-hmm. so and we're trying to make it win-win for everybody yeah, make it worth your time. Yeah, absolutely. And also light editing, the only reason we're... like not you know, take out yeah. take out the extra crazy. You can leave a little bit of the crazy in. Yeah, it'll be nothing like the last one where we recorded it all sitting in a conference room <laughs> or yeah. a conference the hallway. hallway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which sounded really good, by the way. Shocking. Thanks. Yeah, good job, it Brian. Did. And thank you yeah. to Matthew Passy for that because he saved our yes. behind with microphones, nice microphones. And the, and they're whether SM seven Bs, what I'm no, those uh, are fifty eight. I get see, I get those two. It's like the seven Bs. I wish. Oh yeah, yeah I got they, they always get them. Can like SM five <laughs> six seven. So so Carrie, did you know that you recorded you and Jennifer on the same track? I did not. You know what happened? <laughs> Here's what happened. <laughs> they were on. It was a Oops. stereo track. And you stripped it to mono. And I. Somehow gave you a mono version of it. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> you should have said something. I would have. I would have fixed it. Yeah, because Jennifer was in the one ear and I was in the other, and I. Well, now you're both dead center. Okay. Wow. Nice. Which yeah. is fine. And that's how I tried to send nice. it to you. So apparently okay. that did not work out. That's all right. Meow. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I got to say. That so sometimes we get it wrong. I was busy. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you did a great job though. So you did a great job. Who wants to who wants to start the where can you who am I and where can you find me and then close us out? So I am Daniel Abendroth of Roth Media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram at Roth Media underscore audio, or Facebook, Roth Media Audio, or at RothMedia.audio. I'm Jennifer Longworth. You can find me at bourbonbarrelpodcasting.com. My social media handle everywhere is KY Podcasting. So I am Carrie Caulfield Eric, and you can find me at yayapodcasting.com. All my social media links are there, but if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Carrie Eric. And I'm Brian Ensminger. You can find me at toptieraudio.com. All of my social profiles are linked there, but they're all at Top Tier Audio because I've lack creativity. Uh, At some point, you'll be able to find this show at the Podcast Editor's Mastermind, and you'll be able to subscribe to it. However, in the interim, we'd we'd suggest that you connect to at least one of us so that you can be notified the next time we go live, and we'll keep you up to date. Thanks for being here. Thanks.